Uh, the other day, this printer I have here, the nozzle got jammed, and I was trying to remove the jam. It, I just couldn't get it to work right, so I decided that I'm going to go ahead and replace the nozzle. And in order to do that, I had to buy a replacement nozzle. So I went online and started looking. I bought this generic set of replacement parts. Um, it comes with various things, including a whole bunch of nozzles. I just made sure that it's the right size for my printer. I guess it's nice to have all these other things as well that it came with. It was fairly cheap. I think it was like less than 10 bucks. I'll have the link in the description in, of this video if you guys are interested. But let me go ahead and open this up. I haven't opened it yet just to kind of see what's inside. So it comes with this extra tubing um, to replace the part where the filament goes through the tube up here and down into the eventually into the nozzle and heats up. Uh, I'm not going to replace the tubing, but it's good to have, I guess, some extra tubing. Came with these things, which are, I guess, like, uh, I don't know exactly the terminology for them, but it's these parts here. Let me see if I could get you a close-up view. So it's this portion here, this little bit, and then this part right here. So it comes with some replacements for that. Which again is nice to have, but I don't think I'm going to replace it until it breaks. And let's see what else it comes with. Of course it comes with the nozzles. These aren't actually the exact size nozzle that this printer has. I was reading online and it's pretty easy to adapt. So I'm going to give it a try. If it doesn't work out, I'm going to have to go buy another nozzle set that's made for this printer. But I'm going to go ahead and give this a try first. And let's see what else we got. We got these guys here, which is used to unjam the nozzle. So when filament gets stuck in it, you can use this to unjam it. And it comes with this part, which I'm not entirely sure what they are. I don't think my printer uses these because I haven't found any in there. I have taken this apart once to see what's inside so I could figure out what replacement parts I need to buy. But apart from that, I haven't done much else to it. So, let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start off by taking this plastic cap off so you guys can see what's inside. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use a flat head screwdriver like this um, to remove these clips off the sides. Actually, you can kind of do it with your finger too. And this exposes pretty much everything you're going to need to see to replace the nozzle. So yeah, the filament goes through there and then um, goes down eventually to this heating portion which heats up the filament and the nozzle is down here. Now but I have previously removed this nozzle so it's actually loose. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it with my fingers. These are very tight on there usually and either you're going to have to put a lot of pressure to remove it or what most people do is they heat up the this portion here just so they could get the metal kind of to unstick and then they just remove the nozzle more easily that way. But yeah, as you can see my nozzles very badly jammed and I really don't feel like cleaning this thing. Some people clean it and reuse it but as cheap as nozzles are you get a whole bag. This is, you could get even more than this for very little. So it's, 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 I don't think it's worth my time and effort to reuse this one. So, but this is a good opportunity to show you guys the difference between the nozzles I got and the size of the original nozzle here. Let's see if I could compare this side by side. So, in order to get this to work, my plan is to do this. I measured between this heat sink end to the tip of the nozzle that, that after you install it. So when this nozzle screwed in all the way, what I've done is I've measured I've measured from the bottom of this heat sink all the way to the end of that tip using uh, calipers. So I'm gonna have to make up make up this extra distance that that this one takes up by pushing the rest of this up. 
um, into into this portion here. My plan is to actually remove the spacer or at least put a shorter one in there so that I could push this up higher like that. Also, the nozzle had come with this thing. So this was uh, kind of fits in here like that. So it looks like I'm going to have to kind of cut this up or grind it down to a smaller amount. So it'll fit in this little portion of space here. All right, so I got my calipers here and I had previously measured the distance between the bottom of the heat sink to the tip of this nozzle and it was 24 millimeters. Right about there. And I'm going to go ahead and lock this into place and try to get it so that it's once again 24 millimeters. Let's see if I could get this right. There we go. So, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and re loosen this bolt here. And just move this down up to the point where it's 24 millimeters away from the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure the distance or how much material I need to remove from this plastic spacer. So, what I'm doing is I'm just comparing the amount of space it's supposed to take up now with the movement I made in this mechanism. And it looks like I'm going to need to remove about Hmm, this marker is not very good I'm going to need to move about from the end of this green mark up So that much material I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, disc sander to do that I can't think of a better way at the moment All right, so here's the filed down plastic portion. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back inside. So that's that's all there was to it so far. Um, gonna go ahead and pop this guy back on there and then we're gonna give it a try after I calibrate it Alright, so for uh, my test print, 
I'm gonna go ahead and print this Benchy or something or another. It's like a test with a lot of different angles and arcs and so forth to kind of test out how the printer prints. And I found this on Thingiverse. There's a lot of different things you could find for a good test print. Um, this one's just kind of a fun one, so I'm gonna give this a go. I'm gonna go ahead and download the benchy.stl file and open it up in Cura. Uh, select the best result, uh, best uh, presets I can to get the best print out of it, and just print it out and see how it does. All right, so I have the STL file opened in Cura. Um, just in case you're wondering, I have Cura version 3.2.1 installed. Um, it's not the latest version at the moment, but it is pretty recent. And in this version, they have the Monoprice Select Mini Printer available in the Printers section. So if I go to Settings Printer, Manage Printers, I have, this was my old setting I had entered manually, but as soon as I upgraded to the latest Cura, they already had my printer in there pre-configured. So I just had to select it. And so what I'm going to do now is I have PLA as the filament. I'm going to go ahead and do ultra fine. Well, no, I'm, I'm just going to do fine. I never print in ultra fine, so there's no reason to test in that mode. So I'm going to go ahead and do fine. So after cleaning it a little bit, this is how it turned out. I think it came out pretty alright. I don't see anything major on there, any sort of major issues. Uh, the lines look nice and clean. Uh, let's see, the inside part, which a lot of people have issues with. I don't know if you could see that on the camera, but there's that flat portion right below this layer with no support and it actually printed really well without supports down there so it's pretty good um, but I think yeah it came out pretty alright everything looks good well thank you for watching subscribe for more videos like this I plan to put more uh, printing 3d printing and that sort of stuff on this channel thank you for watching